some of the most creepy places in the world are subways. Something about huge underground structures just seems to attract danger. And when I say subways, I mean metro systems, not the sandwich shop, which is slightly less creepy. So this is a list of the five scariest subway creepypasta. Late one Thursday night, I boarded a train on Vienna's subway station. On entering the train, I observed only one other passenger, an old woman sitting at the front of the carriage. I sat just three seats away from the back of the carriage, and I soon learned that at 12 o'clock at night, the only thing more creepy than an empty train is having just one other person present, a one-eyed old woman rocking backwards and forwards in silence. After what felt like an eon of to be frank, terrifying silence, the train started to move. Almost immediately after it started moving, the old woman began laughing, constantly laughing, shrieking with laughter. She had stopped rocking and was sitting perfectly still, perfectly still while shrieking with laughter. Because of this, I hadn't noticed that the train lights were violently flickering, at least not until they cut out completely. When the lights cut out, the laughter suddenly stopped and the ghostly silence felt like it was encroaching on my sanity. I have no idea how long it lasted, but when the lights flickered back to illuminate the carriage, the old woman was sitting in the seat opposite me. I am not prepared to tell what happens next. I still don't truly understand it myself. As I sat there slumped over a bench in the London Underground, in deep thought on the philosophy of Camus, mostly on how he wrote there is but one truly serious philosophical problem, and that is suicide. I decided to play games on my phone to distract my mind. I must have spent a good 10 minutes playing Snake 2 on my phone, before I was distracted by the sound of approaching footsteps. The sound was soon replaced by the voice of a little girl, asking what I was doing here. I told her that I was waiting for a train. Trains do not stop here, she replied. Trains do not stop here, so what are you doing? As a reaction to this, I took my eyes away from my phone and looked in the girl's direction. But my eyes were not very well greeted by the sight I saw standing next to me. A small child with grey skin and eyes that were colourless. As it turns out, I was not the first person to encounter the black-eyed ghost child. In the last two years, there had been at least 12 reported sightings. According to legend, she was one of three children murdered in the tunnels during the 1960s. The Soviet Union was collapsing. A nation was stunned into silence as their state collapsed around them. I, however, was busy. Ten people had gone missing in the Moscow metro, and with an obsolete police force, it was up to journalists like me to find out what happened to them. I was deep underground in the area that all ten people had reported themselves missing. After each one of their individual reports, all attempts to make contact with them had failed. I walked through the dark, damp, disused subway, barely able to make out the Stalinist monuments. As the hours dragged on, I worried that I may not be able to find my way out. The tunnels do stretch on for miles. Roughly five miles deep, I discover a large vault door attached to a surprisingly small chamber. With some force, I was able to open the chamber door. Inside the chamber, I saw the figures of two men. As I step inside the chamber, I hear the men shout, Don't let the door close! Before they could finish, the door slammed shut behind me. My great-grandfather would tell stories of how he used to work on the underground railroads in Scotland. He and 16 other men were assigned to digging a new tunnel while the subway was being constructed. Several weeks in, they started to encounter fragments of human remains. Each pile of human remains unearthed was followed by an orb of light 
emitting from the earth, rising into the air. The orbs would levitate in the air for a few seconds before suddenly disappearing. It soon came to light that they were digging through a supposedly cursed plague pit. The New York City subway stretches 232 miles. Hidden deep through the old vaults and tunnels, there are a number of abandoned areas. Most are disused stations, but some are just huge, open, dark spaces. There is a small community, a cult, that occupy these spaces. Many people boast of meeting this cult. You could meet them too, perhaps. But I must warn you, they are not quite human. They are hybrids, freaks, some say. I must also warn you that once you are seen by them, once you are heard by them, sensed, once they sense you, you will never be forgotten. But you will forget them. You will go about your life as normal, and as the months and years stream by, the memory of this encounter will fade from your consciousness. But they will be watching. Perhaps you will find a spouse and a mortgage. Still, 23 days after your first child is born, they will emanate from the dark, forgotten realm that was once controlled by humans. And as they approach you, you will experience the encroachment of the embodiment of black-heartedness. They will take your child, and the only hope you would ever have of seeing your child again is to join them. This video is a top 5 today, because I've got such a bad cold, I think my voice is basically dying out. But there is a common metaphor in each of these stories, so let me know in the comments if you think you know what it is.